Okay, may I start, Doctor? All right. Okay, Assalamualaikum everyone. Uh, I'm Sharifah Shamila. So I will start with the first case for today. For the chief complaint, uh, H, a five years old Malay boy with no known medical illness, was presented to the emergency department of HDA with complaint of rash on bilateral lower limb and right knee pain for two days duration. For the history of presenting illness, the patient was apparently well until two days before the admission when the mother uh, noticed that there was a rash on bilateral of uh, bilateral lower limb extending from the dorsum of the feet upwards to below the knee and the onset was sudden and it occurred two days before the admission. Uh, the mother noticed that the rash uh, progressed initially, it was only at the feet and after one day it, it tends to spread upwards. The character of the rash is uh, described as raised, non-blanching, reddish in color with irregular uh, shape and size where the mother described uh, the size as being some being pinpoints and some being a larger pinhead size. Uh, the rash was non-pruritic. It was painless with no discharge and no vesicles or crusted lesions. The other part uh, of the body, for example, the trunk, mouth, genitals and fingers are spared. There was no alleviating factors. The mother did not try to uh, apply any ointments to the rash and there was also no aggravating factors. There was no other bleeding manifestations uh, in the patient such as easy bruising, epistaxis, gum bleeding, hematuria, um, bleeding into the joint or any excessive bleeding after any trauma or procedure. This is the first onset. There was no past occurrence and there was no family members with the same symptoms. Okay, on the same day, the patient also complained of right knee pain where he described the site as being the anterior aspect of the right knee. And as I said uh, before, the knee pain, um, the onset of the knee pain was the same as the rash. Um, the knee pain was not warm or erythematous uh, as described by the mother. Um, however, the mother noted some swelling as compared to the left knee. Uh, there was no punctum or discharge and initially the pain is only mild. However, um, patient started to walk with a limping gait and he refused to wait there. So in view of the right knee pain and in view of the rash, the mother became worried and uh, that is why she presented um, the child to the emergency department. Aside from that, there's no history of trauma, fall, insect bite, or any facial puffiness. So upon further questioning, a week prior to the current complaint, the boy was febrile, uh, however, with no recorded temperature. The fever was only low grade, uh, with no chills and rigor, and it resolved within three days after given syrup paracetamol at home. The febrile uh, episode was also associated with non-productive cough and runny nose. Um, aside from that, there's no uh, other sick contact at home. Okay, otherwise, uh, upon further questioning, there was no colicky abdominal pain, no abdominal distension, melina or hematomesis, which may suggest a GI manifestation. There was no urinary changes or edema, which may suggest a renal manifestation. There's no behavioral changes, seizures, headache, nastiness, or photophobia, which may suggest a neurological um, manifestation or infection. There's no other um, bleeding tendencies, no headache, retroorbital pain, nausea or vomiting. However, there was recent fogging activity in the neighborhood. There was no uh, recurrent fever, constitutional symptoms, malaise, and no family history of blood malignancies. In the family members, they are, uh, none of them has similar symptoms and none of them had history of other hematological, hematological diseases such as um, maternal ITP or any uh, blood uh, disorders. There was no history of trauma or insect bite and there was also no known history of allergy due to food or drug. For the past, for the past medical illness, <laughs> For the past medical history, there was no known medical illness or past surgery. There's no drug or food allergy. There was no history of previous chicken box, no history of atopy. And the patient is also not on any medications or supplementations that may provoke bleeding, such as NSAIDs, anticoagulants, antiplatelets, or glucocorticoids. 
for the birth history uh, and in antenatally, intrapartum, and postnatally, it was uneventful. In, for the immunization history, uh, the boy was immunized uh, up to age according to um, the vaccination schedule, and the most recent immunization was during 18 months. For the growth and de developmental history, according to the mother, he's growing well, and uh, the developmental milestone corresponds to the age. For the nutritional history, um, the boy had exclusive breastfeeding up until six months and started weaning at the age of six months old. And um, now he is uh, consuming adult diet. For the family history, the child is the uh, third out of four children. However, uh, the um, one of the siblings passed away uh, at the age of one year due to a choking accident. Uh, otherwise, uh, there is no history of similar symptoms or any blood disorders. For social history, uh, the boy and his siblings are currently living with his grandparents and they live in a terrace house with basic needs. And in, uh, his mother works as an SPRM officer and the father is an... Uh, and the nearest healthcare facility is KK Kampung Padang and gross earning is around 3000 per month. Okay, uh, that is all for the history for the physical examination. Uh, so the PE was done on first day of admission. Generally, uh, the patient appears conscious and alert and lying in bed with a in a supine position. He is not in any pain or in any respiratory distress uh, and not pale or jaundice. Um, the, hemo the, the hydration status appears uh, good. There was no uh, pad pedal or scrotal edema and no lymphadenopathies was noted. For vitals, uh, everything was uh, normal and the patient was uh, efebrile on presentation. So this is the growth chart of the patient. Uh, his height is between 10 to 25th percentile, while his weight is between 25 to 30th uh, percentile, which is uh, according to his age. However, we need to have a serial uh, growth chart. Okay, on peripheral examination, uh, this picture is just an example uh, because I couldn't get the real uh, picture of the patient. So on his, uh, examination of the lower limb, on inspection, uh, it was noted that there was multiple uh, petechial and purpuric rash on the dorsum of the foot uh, and it was, symmetrical, it was symmetrical and extending from the feet up until below the knee. The rashes were irregular in shape and it varies in size and the size ranges from a pinpoint rash uh, to those around five millimeters in diameter. It was reddish in color and on palpation, the rash appears uh, raised and uh, on blanched test, it was non-blanching. So aside from that, uh, the right knee looked uh, swollen compared to the left knee. So uh, it was uh, non-tender on palpation. Uh, however, the patella tap was positive. The, uh, other than that, there was no erythematous skin, uh, no warmthness or bruises over the right knee joint and the range of motion uh, is full during active and passive movement. So another system that I would like to examine is the abdominal examination. This is to rule out um, the GI manifestations. So for this patient, uh, it's normal. And other systems are also unremarkable. Okay, for su summary, H, a five-year-old boy with history of fever and URTI symptoms a week before presentation, um, was presented with petechial and purpuric rashes on bilateral lower limb and right knee joint pain with swelling for two days duration. There was no other bleeding tendency and no family history of bleeding disorders. And on physical examination, the rash were red, palpable and non-blanching with swelling of the knee. Okay, uh, go back to summary. Yeah. Okay. So tak jadi dah, dah keluar apa, selain tadi diagnosis dah keluar. Tak lama. Um, tapi, okey lah kita, so before we discuss the case, mm -hmm. um, please go back to Grochat dulu. Okay. Grochat. Ya. Yeah. So, nak tanya seorang. Aliana Abdul Jaini. 
can you not, can you give uh, some correction here or do you think it is the proper the betul semua uh, yang lain ada idea atas the weight doctor it should be between 25 to 50 50 50 50 sana juga ah so mana ada 30 sental betul ni siapa ni nama ni Shamila Zaki ya betul Zaki Zaki ha betul ah so there is no 30 sental ya okey yeah i'm on the road ada some not accident lah. Um, the 50 centile ya, bukan 30 centile. Alright, so go to summary again. So dah keluar dari diagnosis is SSP ya. Yeah? But um, saya tanya further lah. Um, siapa ni? Aliana ada. Aikal. Aikal Zahari. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Alright. So, can you um, give some additional to the, to the summary? I give you I give you clue. Uh, how do you establish diagnosis of HSP? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you establish diagnosis of HSP? Um, this on the um, at all. I'm not sure. Either. Others, we need to look at for uh, manifestation. The first okay. is and uh, if there is any joint pain and then any uh, palpable purpura at the lower extremity. Yang, yang first yang purpura ke joint pain dulu? Oh, first purpura. Purpura kan. Uh, ikut diagnosis kan. The skin manifestation should be purpura. Alright. Second is joint pain. Okay. And then third? And third uh, is uh, joint pain. Eh, tadi and the last is kidney. Second dah joint pain dah. Oh, okay. Third, third is abdominal third, involvement. Third, abdominal, abdominal pain. Abdominal, okay. And uh, glomerulonephritis. Glomeruluna, ah, so, uh, uh, apa? Uh, the negative uh, information should be included in apa in summary juga. Eh? The patient has two positive kan? Has purpura and joint. No? Uh, abdominal uh, GI symptom, either pain or hematosesia, GI bleeding, uh, and then last one is no uh, nephritis punya features kan, no hematuria, no hypertension ya. So summary itu better macam tu. So even though apa, only positive tu, tapi it is still fulfill criteria. Ya. Tapi yang negatif pun you kena sebut juga. So that's why we focus that the uh, diagnosis is focused to HSP. Yeah, the fulfill two criteria: yeah, the skin and the joint. The GI and kidney are negative, tapi kita kena sebut juga ya yeah, in summary. Alright. Um. Characteristic of the apa namanya of the purpura is okay, ya betul. The joint pain ni only pain ke with swelling? Siapa tadi? Yeah. Sharifah. Eh siapa yeah. yang pilih tadi? Ah ah, Sharifah. Sharifah. Okay. Yeah. The joint pain was with swelling. Ada ni. The uh -huh. details kat sini. Swelling of the right. Oh yeah. Okay, alright. Swelling of uh, right. Okay. 
So it is apa step forward ya. Ada two out of four criteria kita ada ke HSP. HSP is um, Diagnosis mainly clinical ya yeah, by this criteria, uh, but uh, we should think about this uh, investigation. Apa je, Sharifa? Kena pikir untuk support the diagnosis of uh, HSP. Okay, to uh, support the diagnosis of HSP, I would like hmm. to do um, full blood count. Um, Why? Eh? Uh, this oh this is to rule out other sorry so um uh -huh. I would like to do um uh, apa nama dia a uh, renal profile for to monitor the renal function and I would also like to do a uh, urine ufim okay okay this is uh to also to monitor if there is any renal involvement of uh, HSP okay. Uh, and then, uh, if the patient is presented with abdominal pain, I would like to do ultrasound of the abdomen. Hmm. Okay, uh, this is uh, to visualize. The, what's the purpose of the uh, ultrasound actually? Um, it is Com to... In terms of complication actually. Uh, yeah, okay. It is to visualize any complications such as intussusception. So from the abdominal ultrasound, uh, we can see um, both eye sign. So, but uh, in this case, no abdominal pain. So, memang, yeah, we don't proceed lah. Atau ada? Ada buat tak? Ada. Uh, tak ada abdominal pain. And tak buat. Alright. Okay. So, that's why lah. So, by symptom first. And then, usually by age kan. Uh, how, how old usually is the, um, apa namanya, peak incident of intas tu? Ini kan patient five years kan. Umur berapa dia biasa banyak kes intas? Younger or older than five years? Bukan five years yang jelas ya. <laughs> Apa Sarifah? Uh, ten years old. Eh, ten years older. Yang lain agree tak older? I don't think ya. Yeah. Intas tu uh, usually in infancy ya. Yeah. And especially, specifically dia uh, masa winning ages tu, masa umur-umur 6 bulan, 4 months pun boleh kalau dah start solid uh, food. Usually, dia related with uh, winning process tu. Kalau tak betul, ada risk of interception. Umur-umur 4 bulan, uh, 6 months, 1 year boleh. Uh, Sampai 2 years lah. Above 3 years, very, apa dah jarang. Old, yang old, uh, old age pun dah tak ada. Eh? Okay. Alright. Um, apa lagi? Investigation? Uh, the investigation is to rule out other differential diagnosis? To apa? To con, bukan to con, to support the diagnosis first. In view of pathophysiology, apa tu SSP? Um, renal biopsy? Hmm, this one for nephritis kan. Kalau ada nephritis, yang for uh, Hennox one lain. Pathophysiology apa? Can you explain dulu pathophysiology? Oh, inflammatory markers. Okay. Okay. Uh, hmm. So the HSP is um, a small vessel vasculitis. So the pathophysiology pathophysiology of HSP is when uh, when there is an exposure to ang antigen which will stimulate the IgA production. So IgA will um, aggregate and form complex and deposited into the target organs and cause inflammation of the vessels. Vasculitis, ya. Yeah. Vasculitis, medium and small vessels. And then IgA mediated, ya. Yeah. So IgA mediated vasculitis. So senang lah kalau nak confirm actually betul-betul ada confirmatory investigation tu boleh nak buat apa? Uh, skin biopsy boleh. Kalau masa pasien ada purpura tu kita buat skin biopsy boleh uh, check di IgA deposition on the tissue tu. Okay, jadi it is only for teaching purpose kan, not in clinical setting ya. Alright. Uh, lagi lain apa? 
Untuk the immunologic process tuh tadi inflammation boleh ya asal CRP apa lagi? Serum IgA. Oke, okay, the serum IgA itself and then iko ini lah sama kan di the uh, antigen antibody complex tuh. You can check the C3 and C4 juga ya. Similar process with uh, AGN. Ya. It can give low C3 and C4. Ya. Okay. Lain investigation apa? Um, to roll out differentials. Kita hmm. nak sebut differential dulu sejak. Um, Hani Afisha. Wah ada dua hmm. nih Hani Afisha. Aha. Coba apa? Uh, differentials. Uh, Coba ITP. tunjuk. Coba tunjuk gambar tu. Okay betul. Good ITP ya. You jumpa case with apa? Non blanching rash. Kalau petah ya ITP kalau purpura macam tu ya SSP kan. Okay ITP uh, so nah, antar apa? Investigation. Antar. Um, FPC because there will be low in platelet. Ah, so kalau ini SSP? Uh, higher. Eh, uh, higher. Uh, platelet will be normal SSP. Yeah, normal lah, normal platelet. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, because the purpura petah ini is part of the bleeding tendency kan? Ah, yeah. Bleeding tendency itu cause of the bleeding itu apa aja? Uh, in in HSP? No no. Uh, general question. Kalau ada patient bleeding, what are the uh, apa non apa namanya? Bukan hemodinamik apa lagi? Hemodiasis mechanism that can cause uh, bleeding. Kembali presenter. Trom okay, which platelet as in ITP ya, trombo satu ini platelet satu. Lagi dua apa? Coagulation. Coagulation. Nah sekali ya diskus kan, vasculitis or any vessel problem lah. Any problem in the vessel or platelet or coagulation factors ya. So pikirkan tu. So we check the Uh, platelet kan level satu and then uh, check the coagulation actually sometimes it is necessary ya yeah? so ada tak yang in this case uh, coagulation function dia uh, in this case it's not done oh, not done ya yeah? mm -hmm. okay lah apa depend lah kalau dia dah clinically very confident tak boleh tak payah buat pun tak apa tapi kalau in case No, apa namanya, unsure diagnosis, better we check lah. Siapa tahu dia pelorong coagulation, so bukan SSP lah. SSP will be normal coagulation ya. Because the problem is vasculitis, the vessel problem ya. Oke. Lain apa differential diagnosis, Sharifah? The other differentials uh, can be dengue fever, as this patient is presented with uh, purpura and petechia, petechia yeah, demam, and uh, one week ago. <laughs> one week before. <laughs> uh, so you should, yeah, okay lah, tak salah, tapi jadi funny pula kan. Nama okay. dengue fever ya, kena ada patient on, in apa, uh, apa kriteria dengue fever? Demam oh, yang macam mana yang denggi? Uh. Ya acute onset fever kan? Acute, uh, continuous and high grade kan? Acute itu maknanya dia less than one week. Dia demam dia dua hingga tujuh hari kan? Ini pasien dah minggu lepas demam tak akan sekarang jadi denggi fever. Eh? Now already one week before the symptom. So we don't diagnose denggi lah in this case. Um, lain apa differential? 
Kawasaki Ada, coba. disease? Coba let's count. Kawasaki, what make you think of Kawasaki? Um, Because the rest too. Ah, ah, ah. Kalau rest should be wrong. Ya. Karena last week kan ya? Eh, ya three kan ya? Ya five kan yang last week yang present uh, apa namanya child with rest itu kan? Betul ya? Ah, yeah. Apa yang present last week? Saya. Uh, Farah. Uh, uh, Farah kan. Uh, so you have three different group of rashes kan. Dia first thing ya yeah, this one the bleeding apa hemorrhagic rash like this SSP. The second is maculopapular the third is vesicular kan. Ini kan group hemorrhagic rash. Kalau Yuna diagnose Kawasaki bukan grup of hemorrhagic rash kan, bukan purpura, bukan petechi, bukan ekimosis, tapi grup apa kalau yang Kawasaki? Makulopapular. Nah, kalau dia makulopapular kan, so, kalau nak buat diferensial ya, ikut coba tanya Farah aja deh, apa aja diferensial lain kalau dia hemorrhagic rash? HSP, ITP, lain lagi apa? Meninggo koksimia. Oke, okay, meninggo koksimia kalau dia toxic looking, septic. Uh, child demam maybe tak demam pun boleh ya kalau uh, apa infant with meningokoksima maybe dah hipotermi dah because the hypotension in septic shock ya. lain apa lagi bleeding tendencies nah, contoh ya, kan ini bleeding tendencies kan contoh apa ITP lagi ITP um Owen Willy Brain Okay, from the brand disease. Simple, ya? Yeah? Alright, apa lagi? Infective Sorry? Infective causes. Infective, ha? Huh? What are they? Cause vasculitis, macam denggi ke, lepto. Uh, itulah, denggi, in this case kan dah tak fulfill tadi. Lep, leptospirosis pun, itulah, oh, oh, oh. at the moment kan dah tak demam, ya? Yeah? Okay, what else? Dah. Dah cukup dah. Kau nak, nak discuss apa lagi differential? Okay ya. Um, itu ya. How you think about the clinical approach, about the scientific approach ya. Nak, nak fikirkan differential ya. Ikut yang sesuai the current situation, current features ya. Alright. Um... Investigation still ya, yeah, we discuss. Okay, for HSP tadi kan untuk kidney punya evaluate nephritis, kita kena hantar urine dengan renal profile. And then BP normal ya, yeah? no hematuria ya. Yeah? Alright, and then for GI, uh, apa namanya, kalau ada abdominal pain, to rule out in task, maybe kena hantar ultrasound, tapi in this case kan tak. Apalagi for GI ini? Pasien kan tak ada abdominal pain. Tapi manifestation lain apa? Uh, Syahira ya? Lupa dah. Syahira? Syamila. Eh, sya Syarifah. Eh, Syarifah, ya. <laughs> apa manifestation lain? GI, other GI manifestation? Bloody stool. Ha, bloody stool kan. If it is a gross bloody stool, nampak dia darah, oke. Okay. Tapi in case uh, apa, the parents denied, nampak stool dia yellowish, tapi to know, how do you know there is uh, blood, uh, apa namanya, blood in the stool? Can do stool for of cut blood or uh. can suspect it from uh, anemia in the FBC. Okay. Uh, biasa kalau anemia tu kalau dia gross bleeding lah kalau nampak darah banyak lah kalau darah sikit sulit tak lah kan because this acute situation kan and that's kalau chronic illnesses okay so tu ya um, like in this case if you want to rule out any uh, apa namanya hematis hematisasia blood in the stool ya maybe need Uh, still for cut blood, tapi not that important pun because tak ada abdominal pain kan. Okay, 
apa lagi yang joint joint pain do you need any investigation joint swelling arthritis Sharifah? No. Oke okay, ya, klinikal memang udah SSP lah, tapi in case you nak pikirkan other causes of arthritis, apa aja? GIA. GIA, oke okay, GIA. Tapi mungkin kan in this case kan akut berapa lama dia tadi? The symptom tuh? The features? Yeah, uh, joint pain was two days. Ah, akut lah. GIA kena apa? Sarak GIA dia. Criteria of diagnosis. Apa? Sorry, Pak. Criteria of diagnosis GIA. It's uh, the duration has to be six weeks. And yes, later. six weeks. Yeah, more than six weeks. Six weeks. Boleh dia terus menerus six weeks atau dia on off, on off, on off more than six weeks. Yeah. Bukan uh, tak semestinya dia kena apa uh, terus menerus saya tengok lah sampai kan of very mild nya juga ini bila boleh on off nya okay uh, and less than 16 year old kan sebab kalau more than 16 year old in adult tu kita bukan diagnosis juvenile kan kita diagnosis rheumatoid arthritis ya juvenile ni kena in children less than 16 years old ya. okay So apa lagi yang you pikir kalau patient with uh, joint swelling? Rheumatic fever. Okay, kalau dia apa syarat dia kriteria? Joint What? polyarthritis ah. and migrating. Polyarthritis and migrants, yeah. migrating polyarthritis. Yeah. Okay, um, lain? Septic arthritis. Ah, septic arthritis kan trauma ada ada you dah rule out tak? Tanya tak? Tanya. Ada jatuh ah. Ha? Ha. Tak ada trauma. So maybe ada bleeding trauma in in certain situation maybe we can proceed with at least x-ray dulu lah. Di joint x-ray tu ni x-ray antero posterior and lateral. Tapi in this case I don't think kita buat ya. Alright. Hmm. Anything about investigation? Nak tanya apa lagi lain? Siapa? Anyone? Doktor. Oh, kalau yes. Ini, uh, kalau DDX of joint pain tu, can it be hemophilia? Boleh. Ha, jelas. Swelling kan. Ha. Okay. Ini budak laki ya? Ah, uh, ya, yeah, uh, boy. Ha, itulah, boy. So that's why kan tadi apa one of apa um, necessary investigation maybe you you need to check the coagulation function kan kalau hemofilia akan nampak terus kan prolong apa aptt prolong aptt prolong apa namanya intrinsic factors ya eh, inadequate eh, intrinsic factors atau delapan atau sembilan kan So itulah, um, if you want to get, uh, put hemophilia as DDX, ya, kena hantar coagulation ya. So in HSP must be normal. Ya. Kalau prolong apalagi yang only APTT, ya, we should think about diagnosis of hemophilia. Tapi hemophilia biasa memang swelling dia hemartrosis ya. Usually despite swelling memang dia with Swelling dia pasti uh, not only acute lah dia usually more than two week, more than one week, more than two weeks sometimes, and then with uh, clear decrease range of movement dia sampai terganggu aktivitinya. Okay, so uh, apa lagi investigation you go go next next lah. Okay, for the full blood count, uh, we can see that the page. Ah, boleh, boleh, tak apa. Next. Uh, Abuse uh, normal. Inflammatory ini, markers was high. Nampak ya, inflammatory. Ah, ini. Eh, urine tu coba tengok. Urine was normal. Ah, so, memang tak ada nefritis ya. Eh. Next. And tak, itu ah. je. Yes, oh, titer kenapa you nak hantar? Uh, if we suspect any um, glomerular nephritis? Eh, tak ada lah kan tadi uh, urine dengan uh, renal profile dah normal. Yeah, we don't we don't apa? 
we don't proceed lah. Ini kan uh, apa next step ya. Kan? For this case, we don't think. Tapi kalau APT, APT, T, C3, C4, maybe we can do it uh, routinely juga. Okay, next. And yeah. that, that's all for the investigation. Okay, anyone? Tak ada ya? Yang lain dah clear ya? Management? Apa? Treatment? Sharifa? Uh, for this patient, first uh, I would like to uh, admit this patient and advise for bed rest and uh, I would like to stabilize the patient um, and give adequate hydration and uh, monitor the vital signs, especially blood pressure. Uh, I will also uh, do, uh, because um, it is one of the uh, complications of HSP and also hmm. if okay. complication. Uh, I mean uh, it is uh, one of the manifestation if there is a renal involvement of HSP. If there is can in this case lah tak ada lah. In this case lah tak apa tak payah pikir yang oh, okay. yang susah susah. <laughs> this case kan tak ada nephritis kan. Okay, uh, so for um, I would give supportive management for this patient yes. is for the joint pain. Um, uh -huh. So I will give uh, analgesics such as uh, NSAIDs, mm. uh, ibuprofen, mm. and uh, and I would watch out for um, any uh, new symptoms such as abdominal pain or uh, any other bleeding tendencies. Okay, nah, betul ya. Bagi NSAID supportif ya. Mainly supportif. Untuk joint pain bagi NSAID dia cukup. Um, but the main problem is purpura kan. So, what will you do with the purpura? Steroid? Hmm, steroid? Uh. Apa? Indication. When, when do we need steroid in SSP? Not for the purpura, tapi for the for abdominal uh, pain. Uh, pain is very severe lah. Kalau only mild, ya boleh je NC juga. Abdominal pain and apa bleeding lah. Ada FGI involvement. Usually kan, karena kita takut kalau bagi NC dia takut jadi more severe pain. Uh, so, uh, misalnya bagi steroid, tapi yang low dose, usually only 1 mg per kg. Kalau yang with nephritis, kena ikut nephritis punya manajemen. Sometimes macam ikut nephrotic syndrome management tu. Bagi round to mg per kg. Low bed pula. Alright, so in this case, NSA cukup. For the purpura, what, what will you do? Parents ni tanya, doktor ni apa nama? Uh, for reassurance. Uh, reassurance only. So we must be sure that prognosis of SSP is good. Yeah? It will resolve within two weeks lah usually. Two to three weeks boleh cakap. Yeah? So tak buat apa-apa. But most likely parents will ask about that kan. Jadi macam mana nampak kulit dia merah-merah ada darah ni. Ha. Dia akan hilang sendiri. Ya. And then for the joint pain tadi, NSAID boleh kalau abdominal pain, low dose steroid, kalau nephritis, high dose steroid. So that's why kan tadi kriteria diagnosis ada empat tadi. Because this four features ni give four different uh, management. Lain-lain ya. masing-masing. Alright. Ya, nak tanya apa lagi? Ini seng buat this case. Dah cukup. Okey. Okey, go to second case. Second case ni siapa patient? Saya. Saya Dr. Badrul. Badrul ya. Alright. Ini acute case lagi ke? Ke jumpa yang uh, kronik? Acute. Hmm, sama je kan. Nanti dah tak ada, ya dah tak apalah yang face to face lah cari kes-kes yang kronik. Okay. Ini nak, nak, nak senang periksa, cari kes yang acute, simple. Alright, dah periksa. 
Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, yeah. right. Okay, so for the chief complaint, MFH is uh, an eight years old Malay boy who was referred to HDAA uh, with complaint of fever for nine days, neck swelling for four days, and abdominal distension for one day duration. So for the HOPI, uh, the patient uh, complained of fever for nine days. It was intermittent, which usually strike up at night. Uh, it was warm to touch, and the highest temperature recorded at home was 38 degrees Celsius. It was not associated with chills and rigor. The fever temporarily relieved by syrup paracetamol for a few hours, then it spiked again at night. It was associated with runny nose uh, with clear discharge. And also the fever is associated with sore throats, which causes the patient uh, having discomfort during eating. Um, it was associated with reduced oral intake. However, the patient still can tolerate fluid and he was still active. Okay. And then the, um, the farthest uh, of the patient started to notice that the patient developed neck swelling, which is on the day six of the uh, fever. So it was uh, initially small and later the father noticed that it started to uh, progressively increase in size. It was high in consistency um, on, and it was located on the right side of the neck with a size of two finger breaths. Um, and it was also associated with redness uh, around the areas of swelling and uh, pain upon palpation. It was non itchy and there was no discharge noted. Uh, the neck swelling does not restrict the um, neck movement of the patient. Otherwise, the father uh, denied any uh, swelling or uh, the armpit or groin or other areas. And it was, uh, the patient also uh, complained of abdominal distension, which is uh, the father claims that uh, it was at the right upper parts of the abdomen. Uh, it was high. Uh, and also painful upon palpation, and it occurred suddenly. Due to that, the father brought his son to a private clinic, and he was told that his patient uh, having liver enlargement. And then the child was referred to uh, emergency department of Pekan Hospital at first. After that, he was transferred to HDA for further management. Okay, uh, the patient also uh, have uh, developed. Uh, swelling, which is at the periorbital areas, uh, which is on the day four of the fever. Uh, there was no variation of the swelling, whether in the morning and night, it occurred throughout the day. Uh, the, there is no other history of swelling in other body parts, such as limb swelling, and it wasn't associated with any redness of the eyes and any purulent discharge of the eyes and also uh, any eyelid swelling. Apart from that, uh, the patient also developed rash, which is on the four days of illness, and also uh, it's worsen in, uh, in the first days of admission, uh, which is on the ninth day. It was multiple uh, around the neck areas and also uh, around the trunk. Uh, the father described that the rash uh, was red in color, raised, non itchy, uh, and not associated with any discharge or disquamation. Uh, the father claimed that the rest specifically developed after the consumption of the antibiotic given um, uh, by the private clinic. Um, however, there is no other uh, six mem uh, contact with six members in the family. Uh, the patient is not from dengue prone area and there was no recent history of fogging. There is no uh, history of uh, easy bruising, uh, symptom of anemia such as fatigue, shortness of breath breath palpitation and history of frequent infection. There are also no history of malignancy such as lymphoma and also leukemia running in the family. There is no uh, significant wet loss or drenching night sweat or uh, any history of dry cracked lip or lesion in the tongue or discrimination around the fingers and also the toes. And there was also no history of redness of the palm or at the sole of the foot. For the past medical and surgical history, there is no known uh, medical illness or significant surgical history. This is the first hospitalization. Um, for the drug history, 
um, the patient was given syrup paracetamol and antibiotic only. Uh, however, the father was, uh, was unsure what type of antibiotic from the clinic. There is no allergy history, either drugs or food uh, allergy. The immunization was up to date to the vaccination. There is no other history of receiving additional vaccination or post immunization complication, such as rash and fever. For the growth and developmental history, the patient uh, was growing well and appropriate for his age, is currently in uh, Skolarenda uh, in Pekan and is in the second class and also uh, second place for his recent examination. He can write, read and do simple calculation. His favorite subject is English and he's also participate in sport activities. So basically the growth and development history for this patient is normal and appropriate for his age. And for the birth history, the antenatal, intrapartum, and also postnatal was uneventful. For the nutritional history, the patient was on a normal adult diet. Uh, he eats uh, one to two heavy meals uh, consisting of rice, some proteins. However, he dislikes uh, fruits and vegetables. So uh, the patient uh, should, uh, to conclude that the patient has adequate adequate diet, um, then there should not be any problem with the growth. Uh, for the family history, um, both of his mother and father are alive. Uh, both uh, the mother is uh, 37 years old, the father is 41 years old respectively, no history of consanguineous marriage, uh, both of her, uh, his parents uh, having no known medical illness, he is the eldest and all of the siblings are currently healthy with no similar presentation. For the social history, uh, the patient lives in Kampung Taman Tengah, both uh, with his parent and sibling. Uh, the house was uh, adequate with water supply and electricity. His father worked as a technician, uh, while uh, his mother is a secondary school teacher. The household income about 7 k per month. His father is an active smoker, but claimed to be not smoking uh, inside the house. Um, there is no history of a, a high risk behavior in the family. The nearest clinic uh, is a clinic kesihatan Bandar Pekan. Okay, for the proceed to the examination. Okay, for the examination, uh, general examination, the patient was conscious, alert, not in pain, not in respiratory distress. Uh, he lay in a supine, uh, supine position without having difficulty. He was thin built, not cachexy. There was branula attached at the left and the right dorsum of his hand with no active infusion. Um, there is no clubbing, palmaritima, or peripheral cyanosis. The peripheries was warm. The capillary fill time was less than two seconds. There is no bruise noted. Uh, there was BCG scar noted at the left side of his shoulder. However, there was conjunctival pallor, but no jaundice and cyanosis. Periorbital edema was noted on both sides of the eyes. Upon mouth examination, uh, there was exudative tonsil noted bilaterally, and also upon uh, head and neck uh, examination, there was multiple small size, macula papular ashes noted on the neck. It was blanching and uh, there is no peeling of the skin noted. And uh, there, was, there was also anterior cervical limb adenopathy, which is noted on both right and left sides of the neck, measuring about uh, two times one and one times one cm respectively. It was high in consistency uh, with rounded border. It was non-mobile, not attached to the skin. There is no skin discoloration, tenderness, warmness, or discharge around the area. There is no pedal edema. So for the anthropometric measurement, the weight of the patient is on the third centile. Uh, the heat is between 50 to 75 centile. Otherwise, the vital sign for this patient uh, on the day of examination was normal. So this is the uh, height of the patient between 50 to 75 cental. The weight is on the third centile. Uh, so probably uh, 
we cannot say that the patient having failure to thrive. So it's just probably because of the patient is very thin, is thin, okay? So for the systemic examination, um, abdominal examination on inspection, the abdomen was distended, uh, mainly on the right hypochondrium. The umbilicus was inverted and centrally located. The abdomen was moving symmetrically with respiration, otherwise, there was no scratch mark, dilated superficial vein, hyperpigmented or hypopigmentation of the skin and scar noted. However, there was small multiple size macular popular rash noted on abdomen uh, that was blanching and not associated with any peeling of the skin. Uh, on palpation, the abdomen was soft and also non-tender. However, there was hepatomegaly noted, which is 4 cm below the coastal margin. The liver span was about 40 Thin centimeter. The, however, the liver, the liver surface was smooth with normal consistency and uh, the kidney were not blottable. Upon percussion, uh, there was no ascites. However, the trout space was dull, indicating there is mild spilomegaly. Upon auscultation, the normal bowel sound was heard. So, uh, on other systemic examination, it was unremarkable, except there is a presence of macular papular rash on the precordium and also on the chest. For the case summary of the patient, uh, this is an uh, eight, 8 years old Malay boy presented with history of fever for 9 days, neck swelling for 4 days and abdominal distension for 1 day prior to admission. Uh, it was associated with sore throat with reduced oral intake, parrot, orbital edema and multiple macular papular rash on the neck and also the trunk that occur after antibiotic consum consumption. On examination, uh, there were periorbital edema, bilateral exudative tonsil and also bilateral anterior cervical limb adenopathy and also macular papular rash noted on the neck, trunk and also abdomen. On the abdominal examination, there was hepatosplenomegaly noted. Uh, okay, stop dulu. Huh? Ini dah habis kan? Uh, summary. Yeah. Kan ada. Uh. So, memang quite complicated case-nya ini. Alright. Nak tanya diagnosis ni. Siapa ni? Muslihana? Muzakir? Muslihana ada? Hmm, hilang. Oh. Ariana lari pula. <laughs> Ariana left the class. Yes, yes. Sorry to uh, sorry, Doctor. Okay, alright. Apa? Can you give uh, one diagnosis, possible diagnosis? Dengki. Dengki. Uh, Jauh lah dengki. Uh, Badrul, agree tak? One of the differential dengki tak? Uh, no. I didn't put uh -huh. dengki because uh, the fever was prolonged uh, and uh -huh. there's a history of fogging or uh -huh. from dengki. More than seven days lah kan? Dengki itu usually paling lama pun seminggu. Kalau dia prolong more than one week, dengki itu usually kalau yang severe dengki with maybe complicated with sepsis, dia akan prolong more than one week. Kalau dengki only, one week yang cukup. Okay, lain anyone nak propose view differential tak payah yang betul saya pun saya belum tahu. I, I, actually I don't know what is the final diagnosis by this summary. Kena ada few investigation juga lah. We can put few difference, uh, some differential diagnosis lah. Yang lain tak ada suara ke ni? Tak ada senyap semua? Yes, mononucleosis. I am uh, Badrul, agree tak? Yes, that is my provisional. Oh, it's one provisional, okay. Alright. For differentials? Can it also be post-gumeronal nephritis? Post-gumeronal nephritis. And, okay. Badrul? Yes, uh, it's possible. Uh -huh. Because patient has very obito edema. Okay, and well, also so true. The, but there is, is there any hematuria and hypertension? 
no in this patient uh, ah yeah, ya possible tapi uh, less likely lah okay anyone else yang nak uh, apa propose kawasaki kawasaki patrol for kawasaki uh, it's possible but i think this patient uh, is less likely to have kawasaki because of the age is 8 years yes the patient has fever more than 5 days and also rashes but uh, ada and also adenopathy however the other diagnostic criteria were not present hmm. kalau ada kawasaki pun incomplete ya incomplete kawasaki tapi lah, we think others first lah. Because tak ada apa, uh, edema and erythema tu tak ada ni. Okay, tadi ada cakap apa tu, lift, yang bahasa lift tadi. Ada seorang yang cakap. Boleh repeat tak tadi? Regarding the lift no party. Tak keluar suara dah. Lymphoma, Badrul? Yes, that is one of my differential diagnosis also. Uh -huh. Okay, anything else? Maybe nak pikirkan yang lain-lain lagi? Okay, so Badrul, continue apa? your presentation. Okay, so apa? for my provisional diagnosis, hmm. uh, it's infectious mononucleosis because of the patient presented with the classic uh, triad, lah, which is a fever, uh -huh neck swelling and also sore throat and also there is a abdominal distension which can occur also in the patient with a mononucleosis and there is a typical presence of maculopapular rash after antibiotic consumption which uh -huh. also support the mononucleosis diagnosis and on physical examination uh, there is a adenopathy and also um, exudative tonsil and hepatosplenomegaly which can occur in patient with mononucleosis. Okay, good. So, memang apa? The most likely will be infectious mononucleosis. Yeah? How do you confirm the diagnosis? Uh, for the uh, infectious mononucleosis, uh, first, uh, it's actually a clinical diagnosis, but for yeah. the investigation, I would request for um, full blood count to look for predominantly lymphocytosis more than 50% and also we order for the blood film to look yes. for any presence of atypical or reactive ah. lymphocyte. Okay, atypical lymphocyte. Yeah. Um, Lain for the serology or viral isolation lah, tapi susah lah kan. Serology ada? For the uh, ID investigation to support the diagnosis, uh, we can do the monospot test or heterophile antibody test. Mm -hmm. um, or we can do uh, EBV serology such as antiviral mm -hmm. capsid antigen antibody or nuclear antigen antibody. Okay. Ada buat yang this patient? In this patient, ada buat EBV serology but the result is pending. Oh, tak. Tak, tak sempat apa, follow ya. Hmm. Alright. Next. For the other DDX, it could be EBV negative mononucleosis. Uh, the point score is similar. Uh, however, the point against there is no mucocutaneous lesion to suggest uh, that is a, this is a mononucleosis caused by HIV. And usually uh, in CMB mononucleosis, usually there is no hepatomegaly and for other differential uh, lymphoma because yeah, yeah. Yang, yang yang apa yang non ebv ni um mana kan hiv kan hiv in this case unlikely kan because gross okay kan dia hmm. tak ada tak ada kakexic no history of apa apa uh, apa nama dia presumed history of uh, hiv tu uh, high risk punya history ebv Ah, uh, for CMV apa tadi tak, tak ada hepatomegaly ya? Ke ada kena ada hepatomegaly kalau CMV? Should have kan? Hmm. 
from Rizky kan tak ada kan? Rizky no ha, hepatomegaly kan? Ada hepatomegaly. Oh, ada. Ha. Uh-huh. Oh, kalau CMV shouldn't have hepato. Biasa kalau CMV infection hepatomegaly is common. Oh, kalau in your reference memang not common ya. Saya pun tak baca tak apa tak ingat sangat. Ha, uh-huh. yang from what I found daripada yes. up to date dia cakap uh-huh. macam Okay, so maknanya kena ada hantar apa? Kalau nak diagnose apa? Kena hantar apa? Viral isolation. Um, susah lah. Yang senang je. CMP tu. Diagnosis. Apa? Serology? IgM je. Ya. IgM apa? Anti-CMP tu dah boleh diagnose. But sometimes we need viral load tu pakai PCR ke apa, saya pun lupa. Hmm. Ada tak buat in this case? Tak ada. Okay. Alright. Pasien umur 8 tahun ni. Ya. Usually hmm. CMV tu kalau in acute, uh, apa, in in immunocompetent child tu jarang dia sampai simptomatik. Usually in immunocompromise juga kalau CMV. So lebih kurang macam SIV lah dia. So, usually immunocompromised child. Eh? Okay, next tadi, lymphoma ya. Hmm. Lymphoma, so kena buat apa? For the lymphoma, we can... Investigation? Investigation uh, for the lymphoma, full blood count also. Uh, because... And picture lah kan, full blood uh, picture. And, picture and, also and maybe by... need... Biopsy, no, tapi in this case, uh, apa, uh, karakteristik of the, apa, description of the lymph node tadi apa? Oh, uh, size. It's painful, but lymphoma is painful. painless. Ah, painful, size berapa? Size is 2 times 1 and 1 times 1 cm, small. Kecil lah. Uh, maybe not, no need to proceed with biopsy, tapi FBP lah, FBP we should get the result kan, apa, because at least untuk for uh, mononucleosis, we need atypical lymphocyte juga. Hmm. So, ada ni FBP result? Uh, ada. Hmm. Uh, there is a reactive lymphocyte present. Hmm. So, memang no, apa namanya, malignant cell, unlike uh, in the leukemia or lymphoma, more on reactive lymphocytosis, yeah, uh, support the diagnosis of Infectious mononucleosis memanglah tak jumpa yang atypical betul tapi ya lebih kurang je tu. It actually depends on the experience of the reader juga. Kalau dia dah terbiasa baca atypical lymphocyte boleh je komen. Kalau dia jarang baca maybe just only comment reactive lymphocytosis. Okay. Lain apa lagi? I this uh, acute leukemia. Tak malah buat FBP tadi kan. Yes, no yes. anemia, no thrombocytopenia eh. Ha ah. Uh-huh. berapa coba tengok result ni. Ke ada lagi differential. Shape so cocoa. So more acute kan. Ini. So apa untuk buat apa lagi yang uh, apa investigation for so uh, we can do a short title to look for Increment and mm-hmm. throat swap yeah, also. Confirm your net swap, yeah. Ini buat apa? Eh, asyik hantar tak? This case. Uh, yes. Yes, result? But uh, the result is also, uh, it's elevated. Uh, how, how, how high? Uh, In case, eh, berapa, how, how many fold? Kalau uh, less than 200, ya, yeah, it's not significant. Kalau 400. Tak dimpit. They yes. just mention positive je doktor baik. Ah, tak ada value. Kalau itulah, kalau weak positif yang less than 200 ya we don't apa treat as the total. Hmm. Yes, total should be strong positif. Okay, next. Ah, uh, next ah dah. Ah, dah riza bala je ni. Wasal berapa ni wasal? Shall increase 16 ya. Yeah? Yes. 7 yeah. and then predominant lymphocyte kan. Hmm. Kalau start vocal should should predominantly neutrophil ya, neutrophil. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, next. 
Next is the black film. Jadi yang reaktif limfosit. Okay, next. Uh, di... Normal. Okay, next. LFT dan LFT some damage. Ya, karena hepatoma gali ya. Apa? Di reaktif hepatitis ada. Okay, next. Q-film. There is a elevated hmm. protein but not significant protein urea. Point dua lima ni. Plus plus berapa biasa kalau UFM kan plus plus one two three four jadi kan. Ini point dua tu five ni. Ya equal tu maybe plus one or plus two jadi kan. Kalau yang nefrotik dia more than one gram dia. So kalau plus three plus four tu ya more than one gram. Okay next. Just to rule out at the differential uh, and to confirm. Okay, alright ya. Yeah. So maknanya we we treat clinically and assess mononucleosis. Apa yang mau you bagi treatment? Uh, for this patient, uh, just a bed rest and also adequate hydration and also okay. symptomatic treatment for the fever so treat. So the patient uh, receive uh, ibuprofen and also the okay throat spray which is a benzodiazepine for the okay. sore throat okay antibiotic apa lagi uh, for the antibiotic yes uh, uh, on the first day the patient was given uh, iv augmenting but suddenly okay. the rash got the worse flow, rash got. Uh. okay then then Antib stop antibiotic ya uh. antibiotic kan more more likely kalau on road to cover stetokokal tonsillitis tadi tapi lah the flow press I will stop lah. No change to macrolide ya, oral. Uh, uh, they change to IV sulfuroxim, sulfalosporin. Oh. oh bagi juga ya, uh, alright. So cover juga antibiotik. So jadilah apa? Uh, macam ni kan we offer treatment juga. If we diagnose if if we apa confident with infeksi semua nak ya, should should treat antibiotik lah supportif, maybe need steroid nah in case kalau dia ada apa termosetopenia ada tak platelet dia normal tadi? Uh, platelet normal. Yeah, normal. Usually ada some of the features will be termosetopenia. Hmm. Uh, kalau low platelet ya kita bagi steroid lah. Itu for immunosuppressive supaya naik lagi. So this case, okay lah kau boleh jadi antibiotik. Takut uh, sepal bela ya. Doctor, but in this patient, yes. he was also given IV hydrocode, but I wasn't uh, sure sebab apa. Probably nah, because uh, the patient ada for, for the EBV lah. Tapi lah usually apa steroid tu kalau dia ada thrombocytopenia, apa lagi other other uh, indication ya. Uh, Maybe due to the liver involvement ni boleh juga. Saya pun hmm. baca detail di manajemen. You ada reference hmm. indikasi of cakap uh, for hemolytic anemia. Okay, anemia yes. Hemolytic anemia. Uh huh. Issues meningitis. Kalau ada meningitis ya, nah, ini kan tak ada tak ada semua kan. This patient anemia. ada anemia. Oh ada berapa HB tadi? Hmm, I think ten, ten. Dan tapi no, no, hemolysis kan, retik ada retik kolosaid, and ini normokromik normosaitik betul, retik kolosaid tak keluar. Tak ada. Pak clinical ini no jaundice kan, hepatomegali ada, tapi hmm. splenomegali tak ada. LFT pun coba tengok tadi LFT di serum bilirubin keluar biasa kan normal kan untuk hmm. no hemolysis lah ni alright yang, yang dia bagi hydrocode ke perhatian soalan? Uh, hydrocode yang ini ini the reference ya yang perhatian soalan ni uh. ok alright apa lagi next? Ini hospital pekan ke? Ah, uh, HTA. 
At first, okay, how... admitted to Pekan, then transfer to HDA. Transfer. How long was the patient admitted? Uh, seven day, one week. Okay, discharge with apa uh, recovery kan? Hmm. Yes. Nah. So mana ya dia masa admit kan dia nine days of fever kan dah dah hmm. prolongan. Nah, itulah the one of the classic EDV infection is subacute ya more than seven days. Ya prolong. Dan nasib baik dia cepat. Sometimes boleh sampai six weeks ni, sorry. EDV itu. Ini dia cepat je kan seminggu in hospital dah terus improve. Okay, next apa lagi? Mm, just uh, in the patient with EBV, usually we uh, advise the patient to avoid sport activity because uh, specifically if the patient has a splenomegaly because the complication is splenic rupture. Mm, okay. But in fun, splenomegaly can only hepatomegaly kan? Ada result tak masa discharge patient? Hepatoma gali dah, dah uh, improve? Kan? Result. Uh, From ada. 4 cm to 1 cm. Okay. Ad yang masa on admission berapa cm? 4 cm. Below costa margin. Okay. Uh. And then ada apa namanya repeat uh, blood investigation tak? Repeat-repeat uh. yang lain yang monitor uh, SELT tadi apa lagi yang abnormal tadi? Even hmm, but ada dok ada but I didn't um uh, jot down the result. Uh, alright. Oh, ini fun your case ke macam ni? Ah, this is my case from year three. Year three, okay. Alright. Okay. Dah ni sih, dah habis. Yeah. EBV tu apa? Uh, you baca discussion tak? Uh, uh, apa nama dia? The, the epidemiology of EBV apa? Yeah, usually pasti uh, apa poor hygiene apa apa yang lain. Anything about EBV infection? Uh, it's usually common in the childhood. Uh, and, then? and usually by uh by the adult most of uh, the population has already had ebv infection but just, but just asymptomatic because uh, the ebv usually spread during uh, uh through salivary or contact with the infectious saliva okay it is also known as a hissing disease so that's why it's usually uh, by the time of childhood, most of the patient could have EBV infection by asymptomatic. Got, apa maya? Got children actually get the infection from the parents, kan? <laughs> from the adult. Yeah. Okay. So anyone yang lain comment? Nak tanya ke? Nak? Uh, doctor. Yes. So since um EBV in children sometimes you be asymptomatic or just mild, right? But for uh -huh. this patient is quite uh much severe lah because they are the manifestation of hepatosplenomegaly. So should we? So oh, ada kan? Splen tak ada kan? Splen. Uh, ada only mild doctor. Oh ada. Okay. Right. So okay. do we need to investigate for like uh, immunodeficiency ke ataupun immunocompromised state ke? Um, boleh usually yeah when we diagnose tu kan we treat and monitor kan the patient if let's say it is not improved with our management usually kan we review daily tapi usually we expect kan in uh, three days uh, one week tu kita evaluate kan patient ni kan se seminggu dah discharge kalau in this case kan after, after one week Main treatment improve result kan, so we don't do further investigation lah. Let's say they are uh, not improving ya. For example, tiga hari seminggu lagi worsening situation, uh, so we do a further investigation lah. One of them is uh, immunocompromised punya 
investigation lah di saya fee screening kan. Oke. Okay. Alright. Um, anyone else? Doktor. Yes. Kalau nak tanya soalan but not uh, this case boleh ke? Clinical ya. Kalau teori saya pun kena baca dulu. Um, Apa clinical? Yes. So uh, group tu kita orang ada buat discussion tapi uh, kita orang confuse pasal nephrotic uh, syndrome on yeah. over and underfill theory punya uh, management overfill and underfill tu kan uh -huh. hmm. uh -huh. yang overfill tu meaning kan dia apa cutu di high apa namanya hypoalbumin dia akan uh, apa edema lah kita sebut overfill kan kalau yang underfill tu saya pun lupa-lupa sikit. Yang underfill tu apa? Pathophysiology dia. Doktor dia Biasanya underfill terbalik. Uh, terbalik ya. Uh. The overfill is because of the retention of sodium and ADH. Ah. Uh. Ah, uh, iyalah betul-betul ha. So itu hypoalbuminemia underfill dia kurang albumin dia jadi edema kan. Uh, and then second pathophysiology karena dia retention of the albumin dia reduce urine uh, dia akan lagi worsening the edema ya. Okey nak tanya apa uh, Zulaiha uh, Farah? Management disease dua-dua tu. Ah uh, management simple lah kalau dia underfill for the hypoalbumin ya we give albumin kan. But not all kan. Uh, usually kalau very severe what more kalau in hypovolemic shock kalau patient come with Uh, shock, hypovolemia, we must give albumin. Uh, tapi kalau patient stable, tengok usually kalau dia very severe uh, below 15 usually. And the criteria of nephrotic kan below 25. Tapi kalau albumin still 20 ke uh, 19 or 20 something, we don't give albumin lah. Uh, itu ya, yeah, for, for treatment for the underfill tadi. For the overfill ya, yeah, The edema kan karena sodium retention, karena urine dia reduce. So that's why simple lah, we give diuretics ya. We give diuretics so, to increase urine output. Increase urine output kan the fluid pun keluar and then the sodium will also uh, excreted. So will apa, uh, further reduce the edema. Kalau yang underfill tadi dengan we give albumin, Uh, adequate amount of albumin intravascular so akan um, retract balik the edema on the interstitial edema tu doktor kiranya uh, yes. in the patient nephrotic syndrome we just kita tak bagi recess dengan crystal light ke apa lah kan tengok situation actually apa Mainstay of apa bukan mainstay the protocol of the shock punya guideline still sama ya any shock regardless the cause we start with fluid kan fluid hmm. tu ya depend on the availability because masa you you get the patient with shock in ED ya usually maybe in what boleh ya uh, usually yang bed set available you boleh reach by your hand tu is Kristaloid kan, normal selain or apa hatman kan. Albumin tu you need to order dulu kan. So uh, it is very rare you ada ada apa uh, bed set available albumin uh, in the world atau in ED kan. Memanglah kalau nak eco apa gold standar ya better you terus research with albumin. Tapi kan when you get the shock patient you cannot wait. Uh, albumin available to research the patient. So still sama lah kalau you get the patient in shock tu, still sama you reach apa uh, please uh, immediately give fluid. Ya yeah, usually normal selain and crystalloid lah. But in the same time you try to get albumin kalau dia memang uh, clearly due to the nephrotic syndrome due to the hypo albumin. Alright. Uh, doktor satu lagi. Yes. Uh, for example, in heart failure patient, so they come with uh, acute pulmonary edema at the same time with hypotension. So kita boleh bagi furosemide ke? 
macam kalau APO kita bagi frosmite but this uh-huh. is already hypotensive so uh-huh. akan me tensive um we usually we give apa inotrop dulu lah uh, because we, uh, more urgent to apa to stabilize the shock tu uh, to resus uh, apa di 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 hypotension tu ya yeah, we must give inotropes baru setelah itu after the BP naik kita bagi prosamat boleh tu apa uh, reduce the fluid So for the pulmonary edema itself, yeah, we give oxygen and maybe ventilation dulu. We give uh, oxygen kalau patient uh, apa nama uh, respiratory failure, maybe we intubate and ventilate dulu. Masa masa during hypotension, we don't give st- uh, apa frosemide because frosemide uh, is non case uh, non apa non drug to apa to to reduce the volume kan. Usually bagi inotrop dulu, uh, ke ke dopa or dobu usually simple, atau sometimes ya norepinephrine. Uh, secepat aja biasanya the respon within minutes dia akan apa uh, improve the BP. Anda kalau yang dah irreversible shock dah uh, very severe one sometimes ya kalau unrespon even with inotrop tu usually biasanya tak selamat lah. Okay, you 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 apa? Step uh, establish the BP first, and then baru after that you give uh, first month. Indeed, memang first month will be very helpful to reduce pulmonary edema. I got the, my last case to last year, kan? Last year I think. Uh, very severe pulmonary edema. So only once I give by myself, lah, bagi apa? Uh, Lasik terus, and then terus improve ya. Yeah. Cepat sangat improve ni improvement. Tapi kalau hypotension ya we we apa we give we do resuscitation first ah we give inotrop dulu. Alright. Okay. Uh, one last question. Yes, last ya. Dah enam. Janji janji. So uh, apa ni for infective endocarditis? We yes. know that. Uh, some patient need um, prophylaxis. So for the prophylaxis, Jadi, uh, kenapa? Need prophylaxis. Ah, eh? uh, need prophylaxis. Yes. yes. So uh, prophylaxis tu kita bagi uh, long life ataupun before pro- any procedure sahaja. Ah, uh, bukan. Yang IE prophylaxis tu maknanya we stratify or we apa namanya classify uh, person atau patient lah yang high risk tu develop IE bukan patient dah develop IE and then baru kita bagi apa long life antibiotic no so kan we stratify kan there, there are uh, several high risk ada moderate ada low risk kan yang high risk IE maknanya this this people ni this patients ni uh, can develop IE anytime so high risk So we give prophylaxis antibiotic usually following procedures. Contoh kan pasien-pasien with apa nama uh, artificial valve tu yang after valvular replacement, apa lagi yang cyanotic uh, complex cyanotic heart disease. So dia uh, apa high risk to develop uh, infection kan infective endocarditis. So maknanya kalau pasien-pasien ni kalau uh, under go a uh, procedure masa buat prosedur kan yang buat operation buat surgical kan buat surgery itu akan uh, increase risk of infection kan of, of IE so that's why kita bagi prophylaxis only that nah procedures no because masa kita buat prosedur kan ada apa namanya we uh, we cut ya apa namanya we, we make a damage to the apa to the barrier kan uh, so kita buat patient more for, more vulnerable to infection boleh je masa luka tu masa ada wound tu dia jadi infek kuman masuk di skin apa nama strap and stuff tu boleh je terus jadi jadikan IE and then tooth extraction juga satu one of the procedure kan kalau cabut gigi kan terus luka kat situ ha the oral punya apa namanya organism tu oral microorganism dia akan uh, Lead to uh, infection and IE lah. 
So only following procedures. Nah, kalau patient tu tak ada luka, tak ada procedure, tak ada apa ya, we 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 monitor the patient only lah. We make sure lagi satu yang penting tu, we make sure the patient's hygiene ya. Pasien-pasien yang high risk IE itu contoh pasien apa itu ya? Ada yang high risk IE, ya we must make sure the uh, pasien itu uh, not vulnerable to the infection. Contoh kan pasien with carriers, with chronic tonsillitis. Uh, so that's why it is apa uh, common in cardio patients tuh. Uh, we refer to dental and Uh, ENT lah kalau dia ada chronic tonsillitis saya suruh buang kalau ada carrier saya either cabut atau apa filling kan because kalau patient with poor oral hygiene with carriers with or with, with with chronic tonsillitis and other problem dia akan vulnerable to develop IE ya okay So maknanya masa dia nak buat apa extraction, masa nak buat tonsillectomy pun kena profilaksis juga, because at that time masa buat prosedur tu dia pasti akan vulnerable to the infection. Ada yang case hari tu NSTA dia with multiple carriers dari river dental belum sempat nak buat yang biasa problem tu with the compliance of the patient lah apa dental dan nak plan nak buat apa-apa belum sempat buat belum sempat ekstrak patient dan develop IE patient apa ya itu dia I think uh, one of the hadises lah I lupa the primary problem dia so tak payah memang yang daily long life antibiotik no nih tapi lah we just following procedure and then we make sure hygiene tak ada apa patient in good hygiene uh, reduce risk of developing IE. Okay. Alright ya. Yeah. So see you again. So, ini betul kan? Ini last week kan you sudah week 5. I think betul lah. So apa uh, we apa, we stop by end of this week nanti hopefully you have three weeks lah nanti untuk face to face kalau maknanya yang next five week itu online for block two and then three weeks for face to face block two and then baru you maknya delapan minggu dari sekarang lah you will plan to have three weeks face to face Dua, minggu, dua bulan dari sekarang. So, sekarang November, ya Januari lah, you will have face-to-face -face session, hopefully. Uh, in, in, apa, in case kalau, apa, improving lah, tapi kalau, with, with current situation, ya, MCO selalu nanti. <laughs> yeah, hopefully improve. Um, oh, ya, yeah, just, nah, jadi 8 minggu ya, your, your, apa, uh, teaching session. Awal kan, 7 weeks only, kan? exam week eight uh, exam and week nine break sekarang jadi tukar ya eight weeks punya teaching one week exam tak ada break ya maybe ada break sekali lah kok because you sekarang pun dah hari-hari dah break kan <laughs> hari-hari kau mah alright okay um, see you hopefully tak ada apa-apa you apa habiskan betul ya yang yang online online seminar and then procedure presentation with your mentor tuh. So nanti masa face to face three weeks only focus do bedside teaching ya tuh. Tengok the cases ya, lupa patients. Alright, okay, let's close the with the speaker and answer ya. Alright. Thank you all. Um, oh iya lagi satu lupa yang developmental assessment we try to apa uh, solve in this week huh? developmental assessment tuh to belajar I think boleh online tapi yang nanti yang neonatal apa teaching yang research and then neonatal exam masa face to face lah kita buat oke okay. alright thank you all assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Assalamualaikum, thank you, thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor.